Hi Sagittarius, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your next four months tarot predictions. This is a reading for all Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for predictions in May, June, July, and August of 2022. Thanks to everybody for the support. I love doing this. I've been reading for 32 years now. Can you believe it? And I love it still. I'll never stop. So we'll continue to continue here, but I do appreciate you. And if you are new here, welcome. I post new readings on Friday, then again on Monday. So if a reading doesn't resonate, come back in a couple of days. You can watch a new reading. Fridays are a general reading. Mondays are something different every week. So of course, this reading is one that I don't do very often. Um, next week, it could be a love reading. I also do more detailed Celtic cross style readings on Monday. And I recently added a Law of Attraction tarot card reading that's pretty fun. And if you like tarot and you like the channel, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to Higher Source Tarot. All right, what advice do you have for Sagittarius? Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. What does Sagittarius need to know, please? For the best and highest good of all concerned with Sagittarius. Messages for Sagittarius, please. Okay. We'll start here with the tarot. We'll have the angel answers. Then we will hear from Abraham Hicks. We're going to go month by month, starting with May. You've got the Ace of Pentacles. The Ace of Cups, the Four of Swords. I swear that's been in every single reading. It's so strange. The Sun. In June, you've got the Nine of Wands, the Four of Wands, the Five of Cups, and the Six of Swords. In July, we've got the Eight of Swords, the Knight of Wands, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Queen of Swords. Into August, we've got the World, the Two of Swords, the Five of Swords, and the uh, High Priestess. Now the bottom three will take as clarifiers. Got um, the Death card, the King of Cups, and the Eight of Wands. Well, I feel like they're telling you there's gonna be a change. It's time to transform. There's some big change here. You start off with May and a glorious energy with those two aces. We've got Leo here. We have, let's see, Scorpio, Leo, um, We've got all the fixed signs coming in. It looks like we have all the elements here too. So I feel like if there's um, a change in terms of a relationship, May is a great time to start anything new. New relationship, new job change. It's going to move fast. It's going to be great though. So with this, this King of Cups, that's a very mature energy. It is somebody who's emotionally relate, um, available for a relationship. It's an energy too of a great confidant. There's somebody in your life here that you can talk to about anything. They don't shock. They don't judge. You can be very open with whoever this is coming in. And with that Eight of Wands too, I want to tell you that's the arrows of love too in the tarot. So there could be a relationship change, but it's beautiful. You've got a marriage card here too. Now, with the death card, we know that's letting go of the past. It's really a rebirth, though. So I do feel like if you've been in a cycle where you just haven't liked how things have gone, this is where energy picks up, and you really do find that things move forward. You move from the past, though, too. If there's been some unfinished emotional business in an area, this will definitely take care of it, where you can move forward and be free, especially if there is a bit of a feeling of guilt for some reason, Sagittarius. Um, I get that with the Eight of Wands, or excuse me, Eight of Swords. Uh, it's not down until July, but I do feel like if there was something that had you feeling a bit guilty, I don't, I don't know, maybe it was somebody around you too wanted you to feel guilty. I just feel like you're going to be free of that. So we start off here in a beautiful way with the Ace of Pentacles, the Ace of Cups, and the Sun. I mean, my gosh. This talk about gains, riches, love, and true joy. I mean, you can't ask for anything better than that in one month. Dear Lord, it's like hurry up and move the clock forward. We want to get there. So with this Ace of Pentacles, it is a new chapter in love or money, but it's long-term stability. So either way, anything you begin here, this is also great too if you're beginning any kind of a health program or fitness program, you'll see it through to the end and you'll make gains. Like you'll like you'll like what it does to the physical body. I mean, it's the only vessel you have to carry your soul around in, so why not take good care of it? 
Now, those of you that are changing jobs, you're going to get more money out of it, but it runs the distance. And I do see almost a series of promotions for somebody. Um, those of you that are writers or publishing something, I feel like that this is going to be like the door that opens where you start to maybe do some research and get an idea of what you need to do if it's been kind of dawning and on the back burner. It's time to pick up that pen or computer again and get to it again. So with the Ace of Cups, in any kind of a new relationship, this is a love that grows. It's a love that's meant to be. It's the kind of relationship you looked for your whole life. Something special is here. There's an absolute match. It might be with an earth sign. It could be with a Leo for some of you, but it's a, it's a wonderful energy. I feel like with this, it's an energy where you feel like you're the luckiest person on the planet and vice versa. They also are ready to commit. It's not really luck though. We know that it's, um, it's alignment. Now with this and the Ace of Pentacles, I want to tell you too that any new friends that you make in this energy in this month of May are going to be people that are around for a long time. So if you really click with somebody and it's like a friend of a friend, it's not romantic. It just feels more like a friendship. I do feel like you're going to have a lot of laughs to come and just always sort of a kinship with this person. So anybody new that you meet there. Now the Four of Swords, you've got balance and alignment here. It's also having mastery of the mind. Okay, so the mind is stable here. You've got an ability to quiet things down, to meditate, take little breaks for yourself, and really be in an energy where you can bring things forward. So the mind is definitely quieted, and it's a lot of stability too, though, in every area of your life. This is asking the door, asking it is given, knocking the door will open. So in this state, you want to be asking because you're in the place where you're really a conduit for the universe. Energy just flows through you with ease. You're not blocking anything here. You've released all the resistance. So the sun is glorious. We love the energy of the sun. I mean, we have to show this together, right? You've got the sun, the wheel of fortune, and the world all in one energy field, okay? This is great. This is making everything happen. This is like dreams come true kind of energy. So with the sun, though, you are going to attract great people. I know I mentioned it already a little bit, but this is one of those things that's synergy. So with this, you have like a new lease on life with the sun. You're going to feel this robust energy and people around you feel this too. I guarantee you people are going to say you look different. It's not physical maybe. It's it maybe more that internal energy, that glow from within. But this is success, it's gains, it's riches, and it is true happiness. So anything that you start with that Ace of Pentacles, you're going to make money on it. But you're also attracting the right people. So if you need information about something or some kind of direction, the right person will show up in this. It really is a card that's going to move you forward with liberation. It's a new energy that comes in, high vibrational. So we can attract in any vibrational area. But the low ones don't stick around. When we attract in high vibrational stuff, it's here to last. I always say this. When you're doing a vision board and you like to incorporate tarot, the world would be a great card, but so would the sun. I mean, it's a beautiful card. So into June, you have this nine of wands. You've got something going on with the nine of wands, five of cups energy. There might be a minor disappointment for those of you, too, that are serious in a relationship, you're planning a wedding, there might be a few minor setbacks, but don't let those become an overarching energy. Then the energy grows where your attention flows. So we don't want to put too much attention on something that's challenging. With this Nine of Wands, so it is an, it's an understanding or a realization, and it brings in a new beginning. So you might learn a bit of a lesson Again, minor arcana can be minor life's problems. So you might feel like in the month of June, some minor things go wrong and you go, what the hell? You know, and then it's like we say bad things happen in threes. Why? Well, by the time we're at the third occurrence, we're so sick of it. We change our energy and we also have a belief that, oh, it must get better now. So it's really coming from within us. It's not just a coincidence. So with this nine of wands, I do feel like you might put some effort forward with the five of cups combo where something might go a bit amiss. But I, again, I wouldn't put too much emphasis on it. So with the four of wands, again with the fours, the four legs of the table, this one brings in great stability, but it also brings in expansion. 
So with this, it's the 1111 card. Pay attention to synchronicities. All those times I just had one the other day about Mad Dog 2020. Remember that vile shit? Oh my God. It kept, it's like I, I ran into a bottle of it. I mean, half gone. Then somebody mentioned it in conversation. It was like it kept coming up and it was just kind of funny. So even something like that where you say, I know I'm attracting this because I keep putting my attention on it and it's funny. That's okay. It's just the stuff that we, again, worry about that we don't want to bring in. This is law of attraction energy though. So know that you are a master manifester. It's celebration. It's freedom from restriction. So if there is something here, I mentioned maybe feeling a bit guilty about a situation, you're still moving forward and making gains anyway. And again, this can be a relationship that really takes off. It's something beautiful. It's a wedding. You know, it's a Hindu wedding ceremony. So it's spiritual, it's deep, and it's a commitment that grows. There's unity here. With the Five of Cups, again, this is don't cry over spilled milk. So the Spirit wants you to know, just don't get too wrapped up in this. It's mind over matter. So if there is a conflict too, like even something with a partner where they put a lot of energy into something and they're disappointed and this is them, you may be the one that says, hey, there's two up, upright cups. What can we do with those? And there's a bridge to go home. Again, we want this to be activity. We don't want to be stagnant in this because that's when it turns into more. So, but with this, I feel like it may be just kind of a blip on the radar with the Six of Swords right next to it. The Six of Swords, I have not seen in eons. This is a card of overcoming something. You've got this uncertain water here with this clear, placid, easy to navigate. As things move forward into July, you might find just a little bit of restriction and then stuff really picks up. So with the Six of Swords, know that you're being guided, know that your ship is coming in, and know that it's all about moving forward into what you want rather than leaving what you don't want. You do have aspects for travel here. So June, July, August would be great months. May would be great for anything, but if you're planning a trip, you might have some small setbacks, but then recovery, okay? Well, we get into July, and again, I mentioned this before, this comes through as more of guilt than anything else. It might be self-imposed. You know, if there was something that you were supposed to do, you committed to, and you didn't keep your commitment, you may find that you have to extend, I get Ace of Wands, like Olive Branch, you know, to acknowledge it and then just be done with it. You don't want to hang out here because it's just not moving forward. Eights are vibration. And they're also about that under, underlying unity. And this is a separation. So when we stay in this, we're kind of separating ourselves energetically. And that's not good. It's like, turn, you know, disconnecting the power hose. We don't want to do that to ourselves. So you may have something here that you have to acknowledge. But again, it's self-imposed too. Part of it is just your value on, you know, maybe what the other person thinks, if it is something you were supposed to do and didn't get done. I do get that. Maybe it's only for one person here. But with the Knight of Wands, you can't stay in that for long. And even for some, if you celebrate the 4th of July and you can't keep an invitation, you can avoid the Eight of, of Swords by just acknowledging that and being realistic from the beginning, especially if there's something you'd rather do because the Knight of Wands doesn't stay still. He loves adventure, excitement, and some of you too, you might get invited to something that it's a friend that you care about, but you know it's going to be boring, I'm just going to tell you, and you may find you want to go do something else. Just be careful, okay? I just don't want it to become more of a conflict than it needs to be. But with this Knight of Wands, you move forward. There's no sitting still with him in the picture. It is too in a relationship, something that picks up and has a lot of passion to it. So again, if you meet somebody in May or you've got a new relationship and that's showing just the building of the love and the long-term stability, you may have a fun little trip, road trip, weekend getaway, something like that with the Knight of Wands. Now in career too, you have a little thrust forward here in July. This one picks up as well and it has that you can't wait to get there. If you're working on something, it's exciting. There's never a dull moment here, but the night does come in service. So it's going to help your life expand, Sagittarius. With this Wheel of Fortune, we love the Wheel of Life. It's a portal into the divine, but this is all very high vibrational stuff. The wheel turns in your favor. It's a new cycle where things come together. You have a turn of events for the better, 
you have unexpected money coming in here. And again, it might help with the the energy of taking a trip. I do feel like somebody here might win something like an Airbnb or a weekend getaway or something like that. Or even a place to stay if somebody has a condo and they say, hey, do you want to use this? There's something like that where you get an offer you're not expecting, but it's definitely more. It's a gain. Um, but this is too, we mentioned that portal in the, into the divine, meditate, quiet the mind, be in the stillness because this picks up. However, you do see that sphinx at the top. So the sphinx doesn't turn with the wheel. So it does say that no matter what the energy around you, you stay in control of your own energy. So those of you that are empaths or you feel energy very deeply and it can kind of rock your world, this may be a turning point where you really learn how to how to regulate that. So you're not allowing your energy to go all over the place with the people around you. Because sometimes that can get very tiring and exhausting even. So I feel like you're going to have a new phase energetically here, but also with the material. Who doesn't like that? The Queen of Swords comes in. You've got mental clarity here. You've got great communication. And like I said, things are going to move forward. This is a great energy to sign contracts. So if the wheel offers you something new and there's a contract involved, you'll use your discernment. This is also the card of the attorney. So I feel like for some of you, maybe you're attracting somebody who's in the legal field, unless you are yourself. She represents that. But again, there's a shrewdness about her. She has known pain. She's the widow of the tarot. So I also feel like she shows up because she doesn't repeat the same lessons. She shows up to tell you that you are free of the past, that you've learned what you needed to learn, and you're not going to repeat the same lesson again and again here. It's really an energy, too, of great confidence. So she's hilarious as well. So you may find that your sense of humor increases. People around you really notice it and maybe give you some feedback about it. But there's never a dull moment with her either and the Knight of Wands, dear Lord. So we're into August and you've got the world. This is absolute self-mastery. It's an evolution. It's when you have every achievement you've asked for, all that you've asked for, here it is with the world. It's everything coming together for you. You do have a beautiful relationship and I do feel like the time by the time you're in August, this is where you're going to be moving in together being in a place where it's totally secure. I shouldn't even say be moving in together. I almost feel like you're past that. Like this is a, there's a great level of security here, but there's also total acceptance of everything in your life. It's freedom. You have a new joy and a new freedom. There's true happiness with the world. And so with this, you're going to have more success, but it's also some, again, it's getting out and seeing the world. So it's a great time to travel, especially if somebody's thinking about traveling to Europe. I see Greece. I do feel like you're going to have the time of your life on any trips that you do get to get out and take. But overall, too, aside from all the success, it is a new perspective. It's a mature perspective. And in relationships, too, it really does bring in that, that balanced energy where you really are considerate of one another. So with the Two of Swords here, oddly enough, any conflict isn't going to be for you. There might be conflict around you. It is a new cycle represented, so there might be something about this, like I said, with that kind of guilty feeling, having this feeling of wanting to think of others who are struggling. I do get that for you. Or somebody who is struggling, who's a bit jealous or has a hard time seeing you move forward. But honestly, you can't halt your own spiritual growth for somebody else to catch up. It just doesn't work like that. So it may not be any intentional pain that you've caused, but I still feel like you have a bit of a sensitivity towards that. So just be aware of it because with the five of swords, you're not looking for conflict. You're wanting to leave the conflict behind, but I still feel like you're having this energy of victory and success. And again, it might get some negative attention. Somebody who's jealous, you may find that you don't always pick up the phone when it's them because you just don't want to get into this kind of energy. It doesn't serve you at all. Um, so with the high priestess coming in, the high priestess is also about staying true to yourself. She uh, represents a character called the Pope of Joan. I think there was a movie and there was a book about her. She's a young, man, a young woman who masquerades as a man to become a priest to get what she wants. But ultimately, though, they tell you to stay true to yourself. So if you do have somebody who's a bit of a Debbie Downer, and they've got a jealous side, you still got to move forward regardless of it. Um, with this high priestess energy, though, 
it is a card of the psychic. So you're going to have great intuition about people and a knowing and something is going to come out here. It is a new cycle, but it's high vibrational. You've got the law of the universe, the book of life here. So I do feel like you have this energy again that is going to move you forward regardless of anyone around you. All right, let's see what the angels have to say for you, Sagittarius. Messages for Sagittarius, please. What else? Whoa. Well, you know what? This one popped out. Let's just keep it. Okay, I'm going to just keep it because it went upright and we could see it. So what else does Sagittarius need to know? Recovery, okay? Mind, body, spirit, but you are moving forward. Starting off right in May. It's up to you, they say. Of course it is. Listen to your intuition. We ended with that with the tarot. They say in the near future. And you've got don't stop. Let's hear from Abraham Hicks. Ask and it is given. Only I know what is appropriate for me. Boy, does that make sense with this reading. When you remember that everyone who asks is given, then how wonderful and appropriate it is for you to make the choices for you. For the universe operates much more efficiently without a middleman interceding on your behalf. You always know in the moment what is the best for you. Well, great things are on the way, Sagittarius. I love you, and I'll be back again soon.